the Christian Sabbath. Hmm. Yeah. The Christian Sabbath. The obligatory day where Christians are to worship replacing the Jewish Shabbat Sabbath. What say the scriptures? What say the scriptures? We're going to be talking a little bit about this, about this thing called the Christian Sabbath. Now, Christian Sabbath, bloop, you're not going to find that in the authorized version of the scriptures. You're not going to find that. Okay? And as far as Sabbath, Shabbat, okay, we're going to address that today. Okay? Because there are many out there who say they are Jews and are not. Okay? Uh, wanting to bring people under the law saying that to, uh, today in this dispensation you have to observe the Shabbat, the Sabbath. Um, Seventh-day Adventists are all about that. Uh, you know, and about the Seventh-day Adventists, you know, I do respect some of them, uh, such as Walter Veith and was it, um, Phil Hughes, I believe, or Bill Hughes, um, two men who did extensive work on the Jesuits, but they're Seventh-day Adventists. And the religion of Seventh-day Adventism was begun by, created by Ellen G. White, a woman. Oh, oh, Second Timothy, anybody? Uh, yeah. And of course, the Seventh-day Adventists, you know, you, you know, promote uh, worship or whatever on the Shabbat, the Sabbath, okay? But also the Seventh-day Adventists, they don't rightly divide the word of truth. If they do, they do it glibly, lightly. Um, and also the mark of the beast is the wafer cookie and the Ash Wednesday cross on the forehead, you know, that kind of thing. But who are the big promoters of the Christian Sabbath? Oh, well, that would be Roman Catholicism. You can see, you're going to see the thumbnail. Roman Catholicism. And also, the, uh, we're going to reference the catechism today. But also Puritans, Calvinistic Puritans. You've seen me uh, show this book before. I um, stopped reading this book. Um, the Puritans, when it comes to the Puritans, the stuff that they wrote about mortification and um, being separate and advice uh, about walking godly. You know, some of that what the Puritans wrote was pretty good. But this book here, this uh, by Lewis Bailey, The Practice of Piety, a Puritan devotional manual, okay? <laughs> um, it became more bony than meaty because Within the latter parts of this book, which I stopped reading, um, about, I would say, 60 to 70 percent of this book is all about how Christians ought to worship on the Christian Sabbath, which is, which they call Sunday, the Lord's Day. Okay, the Lord's Day, and that is, that is scriptural, the Lord's Day. But, like I said, we're gonna, we're going to examine this. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please, please, follow me along at the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the things we are going to be looking at today. Follow me, follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove, okay? Check me out. Check me out. Check me out. Follow along in the scriptures. Okay? We're going to begin in Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. We're going to see in this video a couple of things. Number one, we're going to see that the Sabbath, man, 
turned the Sabbath into an idol. <laughs> Hello? Okay. Just like man, just like man, the religion of man, Roman Catholicism, has turned a building into an idol. And has turned, you're going to see this, you're going to see this, from the horse's rear end, okay, you're going to see this. Um, the buildings are a requirement for this Christian Sabbath. But we're going to see that man ha had turned the Sabbath into an idol. We're also going to see what the Sabbath actually was, whom it was uh, applicable for, and what it actually was a part of. Okay? Then we're going to see some of the arguments that are used to worm in this replacement of the actual Sabbath, of, you know, the Christian Sabbath Sunday. We're also going to see that today in this dispensation, that keeping the Sabbath, or Shabbat, is not a requirement for salvation. And we talk about that in several videos. The video about Mark the Mess, okay, which will be in the description box, we talk about that. We use him as a catalyst to go off and to, uh, in other directions and stuff like that. To, uh, and Mark the Mess is a perfect example of someone who thinks he is, who's saying he is a Jew and he is not trying to bring people under the law. Perfect example, okay? But we're going to see where they derive this thing of Sunday worship, okay? And we are going to see that it is not a requirement for us today to keep a prescribed day. But a day that is to be given unto the Lord, which we are going to see is a, is a scriptural concept. We're going to see that within this dispensation, this dispensation, see, you got to rightly divide the word of truth, friend. Okay? At the root of this issue, at the root of this heresy, is rightly dividing the word of truth. That's the root of it. But getting a little ahead of ourselves, Let's see first how man turned the Sabbath, the Shabbat, as the Hebrew people say, the Shabbat. How man turned God's day of rest into an idol. Mark chapter 2, verses 23, on to verse 28, close of the chapter. And it came to pass, that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day, and his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he said unto them, Have ye never read what David did when he had need and was in hunger, he and they that were with him? This is talking about when David was fleeing from Saul. And he went to, uh, what was it, Abiathar, and asked for the, and he got the sword of Goliath, and he took the shoe bread, which was in a manner common, as David himself says. And Abiathar, I believe it was, I believe it was, if I'm wrong on that, correct me in the comment section. But uh, the priest said, you know, you know, so long as the men have kept themselves from women, they can eat the shoe bread. And, and David said, well, in a manner it is common and stuff like that, okay? That's what the, our Lord is referencing, okay? How he went into the, into the house of God in the day of Abiathar, the priest, and did eat the shewbread, which is not lawful to eat but for the priests, and gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto them, right here, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Ah. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Verse 27 is in a nutshell. And he said unto to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Okay? Now, Looking at ver, uh, Mark chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 6, okay? And he entered again into the synagogue. And there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him 
whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he saith unto the man, which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he saith unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil, to save life, or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked round about on them with anger, with anger, oh, the Lord Jesus Christ got angry. Yeah. And, and the Bibles, they say, uh, if you're angry at your brother, you're in danger of damnation. But see, in the scriptures, whosoever is angry at his brother, uh, if you are angry at your brother with a cause, it's okay to be angry. But what is the cause of the anger? See, the Bibles call Jesus a sinner because they say whosoever is angry at his brother is in danger of hellfire or whatever. But the scripture says, uh, whosoever is angry at uh, who is angry at his brother without a cause. Okay? And did Jesus have a cause to be angry here? And when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth, and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. Okay? Now, go to Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. We want verses 11 on to verse 17. Okay? Luke chapter 13. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And when she, when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. See, work. If you've ever talked with any of the true Hebrew people, the Jewish people, they made a big to-do about, what, well, what is work? And they overdid it on that. For example, some of the Hebrew people about the Shabbat, as they say it, the Shabbat, the Sabbath, they teach that it's called considered work if you turn on your oven, if you drive a car. Some of the Hebrew people will even go as far as to say that there is a certain amount of steps that you can take. And anything beyond those steps will can be contrived as working on the Sabbath day. See, they overdid it. They well overdid it. Okay? And we're going to see what the Sabbath actually was and how it was to be implemented. And see, why we are looking at this, because the Jews in the time of Jesus... And as well as the Jews, the actual Jews, the Hebrews, okay, what is a Jew? Will be in the description box, okay? Uh, the actual Jews of today, okay, also still use those things, still implement what the Pharisees did way back in the time of Jesus. Check me out on that. Look that up for your own. There are some of the, mostly of the Hasidim, okay, which teach that, okay, you can't turn on your oven, okay? You can use the burner, but you can't turn on your oven, okay? Driving. Some uh, of the Jewish people teach that driving is a work. That's why a lot of the Jewish people try their best to live so close to the synagogue because you can only walk to the synagogue, not drive, because in some of them, uh, some of the, um, of the sects, of Judaism, which is Kabbalistic magic today, teach that driving is work. Like I said, some can try, uh, some will say that a certain amount of steps 
is work. Okay? That's what, you know, what he said here. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. And we just looked in Mark. Uh, in Mark. Uh, is, it, uh, is it a sin to do good or to do evil on the Sabbath day? Okay? See, they, over, they way overdid it. And their fear was taught to men by their precepts, the commandments of men. See. Because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, and then therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. And look at the Lord. He calls them right on it. Because, see, what we just what I just said to you is what they were doing. You know, a certain amount of steps is considered a work. Turning on your oven is considered a work. Okay? Maybe sewing. They got ridiculous about it. Okay? And our Lord is like, hey, hey, see, they made an idol out of something that was of God. They made an idol out of it. Okay? The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And some of them would consider that a work. Okay? And you remember, what they are calling work is a man-made law, not the law of Scripture. Remember that. Man-made law, not the law of Scripture. Okay? Calvinists. man made oh, Puritan. Calvinist. Puritan. Okay? Puritans were Calvinists. Calvinists. Puritans. Man-made law. Okay? Man-made law. Remember that. Okay? Verse 16. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from the Sabbath, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, for all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. They had made an idol out of it. They made, they did exactly what Mark chapter 2 talked about, verse 27. That man was made for the Sabbath. Not the Sabbath made for man. Okay? See, they twisted it. They, they made it an idol. So where they could put forth their own doctrines and commandments of men. Okay? Okay? Now go to John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Okay? This is what the Jews in the time of Jesus have done. They made that which was of God an actual holy day a holy day. It's a day that is set apart by God. Okay? By God. All right? Today, in this dispensation, a holy day is a day that you set apart to worship the Lord. Okay? All right? We're going to look at that. We're going to look at that. And that is disgusting in the means that people will use that scriptural truth to put away one day, to have a set aside a day where you put all... You have uh, seven days a week to do that in, okay? But we're going to look at this. The scriptures do, do teach... That, yes, man ought to have a day and where we give our attention unto the Lord. Yes, even within this dispensation. It's not the Sabbath, though. It's not the Sabbath, though. But it's disgusting because people will use that truth and use that to excuse their worship of the Roman Catholic God and to exalt paganism and the fact that, yes, you do have liberty to do so. They use that as a worm, a wormhole to worship pagans, to worship the pagan god of Catholicism. Disgusting. They use the scriptures as a weapon to justify their paganism. Okay? But, John chapter 7, verses 22 under verse 24. John chapter 7, verses 22 under verse 24. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, 
but of the fathers, of the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. And some of the uh, Hebrew people would teach that circumcision is a work on the, you know, on the Sabbath day, on the Shabbat. But yet they still did it. Hypocrites. Okay? If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. And, and, and now go back to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, okay? Matthew chapter 5. We want verses 17 on to verse 20 in Matthew chapter 5. Okay? Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. What is this fulfillment? See, heretics who want to get people under the law will come here and say, so see, the law has not been done away with. It says here the law has been fulfilled. How has it been fulfilled? Okay, we're going to look at that. We're going to look at that, okay? We, we cover this in the video uh, rebuking Mark the Mess, okay? But we're going to look at it in this video as well, okay? But see, people who will want to bring you under the law to say that you have to keep the Shabbat in order to be right with God and stay safe today, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, okay? They'll come to here and say, so see, and, and not rightly dividing the word of truth, saying that the law... You know, is still, you got to keep the Ten Commandments today to be saved. They'll come here and twist this. Looking also that this is in the Sermon on the Mount, but what he is saying is about the fulfillment of the law. How is the law fulfilled? We're going to look at that. Now let's continue. Verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is the thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is east. Where our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father himself, will be on earth, ruling from Jerusalem, that's east, on his throne. Okay? That's the kingdom of heaven for a thousand years. Okay? This is also showing us that during the kingdom of heaven, the law will be reinstated, will be there, okay? You've got to keep the law, okay, during the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because during the kingdom of heaven, it's all works, okay? Just like the Sermon on the Mount is. It's all works, okay? Hello? Let's continue. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom kingdom of heaven. The thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ on the earth physically while he's ru ruling and reigning in Jerusalem. Okay? For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Kingdom of heaven. During the kingdom of heaven the law is going to be there. Okay? The law is going to be there. But he says here Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And see, someone wanting to take you under the law today is saying to you that the law has not been fulfilled. What is this talking about? Go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. you got to rightly divide the word of truth, friend. If you don't rightly divide the word of truth, you become Mark the Mess. Okay? That's what happens to you. You become Stephen Anderson. Okay? That's what happens to you when you don't rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Now, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter, like I said, we, we cover this pretty good in the uh, Mark the Messenger uh, of Satan video that will be in the description box. Okay? Romans chapter 10. Verses 1 on to verse 13. Written for us specifically today in this dispensation. To the Jew first. Also to the Greek. Okay? Let's read. 
Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going, to, and going about to establish their own righteousness, how? By keeping the law. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Because, hey, if someone's, someone's got to, you know, got to keep the law today to be saved, they say, well, I've, I've, I haven't done, I haven't coveted, I have not committed adultery, I'm keeping the Sabbath, okay? Like Catholics, okay? You confront a Catholic on that, they say, well, I go to Mass, I do communion, I do penance, man-made law, okay? Man-made law, all right? For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Everyone. Oh, but these, uh, especially these easy believism heretics who want to refute uh, Romans chapter 10, okay? Uh, they, they, you know, they say, well, calling on the name of the Lord is just for the Jews. Everyone means everyone, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yes, it does. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone except the Jews that believe. That believeth? I don't know. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Watch out for these wicked heretics, these easy believism people who say that calling on the name of the Lord is a work. And they say, well, it's for the Jews. They're lying to you, wanting to damn you to hell. Watch out for them, okay? Let's continue. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. And if you do that, you can say, well, hey, I haven't done this, I haven't done this, I, 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 me, me, me. Okay? That's the righteousness of the law. I haven't done this. I haven't done that. Okay? But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this way, wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Like the Roman Catholic priests, the Jesuit priests. that They teach you that the Jesuit priest with the little dog collar has the magic power to call Christ down from heaven into a little wafer cookie. Okay? I don't think so. And they teach also that they have this magical power to turn wine into the actual blood of Jesus. See, they're cannibals. The Catholic are taught by the Jesuits that they have to eat the flesh of God and drink his blood that they call down from heaven into a little wafer cookie and into a, uh, a chalice. People actually believe that. It's called transubstantiation. It's heresy. Okay? It's wicked. But let's continue. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And there are a lot of people out there who talk about calling on the name of the Lord, but yet do it absent of scriptural brokenness and contrition. That's why that that dear man from Australia was uh, saying that he had called, I had called upon the name of the Lord 24 times and I, that's because you weren't broken, son. You weren't broken. You have no contrition, godly sorrow. And of course, if someone who is not broken and has no godly sorrow and has no fear of the Lord Call on the name of the Lord? No! No! 
No. You know, that, just calling on the name of the Lord without brokenness, without contrition, and without the fear of the Lord, you are basically booting the door out of the way and shouting through the cracks. Brilliant there, buddy. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay? No. No. Some, some will even believe that Christ rose from the dead. Yes. But are you broken of your self-righteousness that you're not a good person? Is it your fault that he died? Or is it you want to add yourself to the number? Are you afraid of the Lord? If you're saved, you are afraid. But then again, the easy believers and heretics and these disgusting Christians, how are you going to be love someone that you're afraid of? A video in the description box will be about that too. Okay? Love or fear. Okay? But let's continue. And see, the way the Romans' road of salvation works, that has been, that the Lord has used me with, the, this way. You guide someone to Christ through the book of Romans, okay? Verse, uh, chapters 1, 2, and 3 deal with the lost sinner, okay? And especially Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18, really drives it home. Okay, and then within chapter 3, they give to you the solution. Okay, the solution, which is Christ Jesus. Okay, and then by Romans chapter 5, you're going to recognize whether you've got someone who the Lord has broken through his word or someone who's going to cross their arms and be impenitent, not willing to kneel or bend, and just wanting to be obstinate. You're going to know by the time. Romans chapter 4, that the Lord leads you to Romans chapter, excuse me, Romans chapter 5. You're going to know that. Then you come here. Call upon the name of the Lord. Because you've been broken. You have godly sorrow. You're scared. You're afraid. And you come here. Okay? That's how it has worked. That's how it works. You can't call on the name of the Lord. And expect to be saved without being broken, without having godly sorrow, and without fearing him. Then yes, dear man, yeah, you're going to call upon the name of the Lord 24 times and it's going to avail nothing because you're not broken. It's not your fault. You're, well, everybody's a sinner, right? Don't watch that. Let's continue. A little wabbit there for you. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek salvifically. Okay? For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him upon all to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Why? Because the law has been fulfilled. The law has been fulfilled. Okay? For whosoever Jew or Gentile shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But see, to do it apart from brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord you might as well be calling on Mickey Mouse. Okay? But see, verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. The law has been fulfilled. Oh, and very quickly, for you devil, easy believers and heretics, okay, verse 14 is talking about those who are sent forth to preach the gospel. Okay? Because one of those, well, they never deal. <laughs> they never deal with verse 14. Verse 14 is talking about those who are sent to preach the gospel. Okay? All right. But now go to Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. Okay? Hebrews chapter 7. See, we're going to see that the Sabbath was mandatory under the dispensation of the law, which was faith and works. 
under the law. Your faith in what God, your faith was in what God will do. Whereas today it is finished, your faith is in what God has done upon the man, Christ Jesus. Okay? Very simple. Okay? But Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. Verses 11 on to verse 19. Therefore, if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. These, these, these guys are of Satan. This is Satan's religion. This is Satan's church. You have to go to a priest. We have, there is only one priest today, our Lord Jesus Christ. You go to him personally. You don't go to a Roman Catholic priest to offer up prayers for you. That's what Shimon the sorcerer did in the book of Acts. He was not saved. Instead of him going to the Lord himself personally, what did he do? He asked Peter to pray for him. Okay? Let's continue. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. Okay? And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth, thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. Why? Because under the law, you had to continually offer sacrifices. These devils, you have to continually go to Mass. It's not finished. Christ is in you according to their own teachings. When you eat Him, okay, you have to drink His blood. According to these devils, okay? All right? <laughs> All right? The, okay? For there is verily a, disannul a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness un and unprofitableness thereof. You had to continually offer animal sacrifices under the law. Okay? All right? Like I said, watch the uh, video uh, exposing the heretic Mark the Mess. Okay? We talk about that in length. Okay? Let's continue. <laughs> Verse 19. Are you looking at that? For the law made nothing perfect. As pertaining to salvation, by the way. But the bringing in of a better hope did. By the which we draw nigh unto God. And of course, Jesus Christ, our Lord God, our Savior, our Father. He is the blessed hope. Okay? And Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, okay? Hebrews chapter 10. What do I have written down here? Verse 9 on to verse 18. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 9 on to verse 18. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first. Referencing unto the Old Testament law, okay? He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once, once 
not a continual sacrifice, once for all. And every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Okay? See, the blood of bulls and goats covered sins. The blood of God, our Father Jesus Christ, washes them away. Big difference. Okay? Hence, the law is fulfilled. Please tell me you understand that. Please. Please. Unless you want to keep the law so you can boast yourself. Please tell me you understand. Please. Let's continue. Okay? But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. The law fulfilled in Christ Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection, the blood he shed on the cross, that is the fulfillment of the law. Okay, that's what he was talking about. One jot or one tittle will not pass away till all be fulfilled. What was that fulfillment? Him dying for sin. Okay? For henceforth... Oh, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Okay? For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and their iniquities, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Okay? And what are we reading to under verse 18? Now, where remission of these, thing, these is, there is no more offering for sin. And then if you were to continue reading, you will read how that if someone had, uh, had been saved and yet fall away, there's no more sacrifice for sins, meaning that they could lose their salvation. And see, heretics will come to this and say that, see, today you can lose your salvation. But see, they always teach that you can get it back. Um, Hebrews chapter 10 here, dear friend, teaches that you can't get it back. Why? Because it's written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Where if you take the mark of the beast, ipso facto, you're done going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Okay? You're going to hell. If you take the mark of the beast during the time of Jacob's trouble, you're going to hell. Okay? See, eternal security, except for the 144,000 Jews. Eternal security is not within the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? That's why Hebrews chapter 10 talks about that. About because it Hebrews chapter 10 teaches that one can lose their salvation. Okay? There remaineth no more offering for sin. Okay? But see, those nowadays who teach that you can lose your salvation. I always say that you can get it back, right? When Hebrews 10 teaches that you can't. You got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. You got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay. What was necessary to be right, saved with God under the Old Testament, under the law, under the dispensation of the law, Salvifically does not apply for us today. Okay? Okay? Now, as far as the Shabbat, the Sabbath, is concerned, go to Exodus chapter 16. There is a video that the Lord had me to do where we talk about this already. I can't 
remember for the life of me which video it was where we go through this thing about the Sabbath. Okay, I can't remember. I don't. It might be. It, it might be in the play. It probably is uh, the playlist about uh, onto the Jewish people. It's there somewhere, but I can't pinpoint which video we specifically talked about this. This one's going to be noticeable because it's going to be called the Christian, the Christian Sabbath. Okay, so anyway, go to Exodus chapter sixteen. Exodus chapter sixteen. First mention. Exodus chapter 16, verses 23 on to verse 29. And it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord has said, Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath, Unto the Lord, bake that which ye will bake today, and seethe that ye will seethe, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. Verse 23 is where some of the Jews go and say that you can't use your stove on the Sabbath. Okay? But you got to remember something, dear friend. We already looked at the evidence that the law was fulfilled for us today in this dispensation. Okay. This was under the law. Where was faith and works? And who was the Sabbath given unto? Come on, come on. Even you heretics know this. Who? Uh, that would be the Jews. Let's continue. But yes, verse 23 is where the Hasidim especially will say that on the Shabbat you can't use your oven. Okay. Let's continue. And they lay and they laid it up till morning, and Moses bade as Moses bade, and it did not stink, neither was there any worm therein. And Moses said, Eat that today, for today is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Today ye shall not find it in the field. Six days ye shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. Talking about the manna, okay? So, there's talking about the Sabbath. The, day, the Sabbath was a day of what? A day of rest, okay? Now, go to uh, Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments, which heretics like Mark the Mess say that we today, in this dispensation, that we today have to keep. Mm, there's a problem with that. Let's go, uh, come on, Exodus chapter 20. Verses 1 on to verse, oh, what do I have written down here? Verses 1 on to verse 12, okay? And God spake unto, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. This, this is the second commandment. Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt have no other god, gods before me. First commandment. Second commandment. Thou shalt not make any. Um, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. See, and Catholicism tell, uh, takes the second commandment and blends it in with the first and says that it's just the first commandment. Um, and worshiping idols is forbidden. Actually, they, they take it out. They take it out. Why? Because Catholicism. It's all about, about idolatry. Okay? That's what they're all about. They make their little marionette statues. You know, they have their certain holy day or holidays where they worship their pagan god. Okay? Satan. All right? And then, of course, yeah, they take that out. Okay? And when they're questioned about it, they, they blend it together. Okay? 
That's what Catholics do, a lot of blending. And then they take the Tenth Commandment and bump that up, thou shalt not covet, and make coveting two commandments. Okay? But let's continue. Okay? Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Where within the Pauline epistles, where for us today is it commanded to keep the Sabbath day? It isn't. It isn't. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. It isn't. Read Romans chapter 13, by the way. Okay, let's continue. Six days thou shalt do thy labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Work. Servile work, you know, to serve people, okay? That's the type of work that our Lord is talking about. But see, the Jews and man-made laws of the Catholics way overdid it and got silly about it. Certain amount of steps that you can take in a day and anything over that construes working, okay? Like I said, in uh, verse 23 in Exodus uh, or what in Exodus 16 about kindling a fire that's where the Jews say, get their thing where you can't use your oven on the Sabbath okay given for another dispensation by the way under the law okay but for us today we are not commanded to keep the Sabbath Paul within the Pauline epistles mentions nothing about keeping the Sabbath actually you do this up I'll look this up. I, I did not look at the plural form of Sabbaths, okay? But um, in the book of Acts, they mention the Sabbath, about going into the Sabbath day. Paul, Peter, James, or not James, but uh, John and stuff like that, they never taught about keeping the Sabbath. Okay? All right? But what does Paul teach about? What does the scriptures teach about a day of rest unto the Lord. We'll, we will get to that, okay? But, this was written unto who? The Jews. Under the dispensation of the law, which was faith and works. Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Okay? Deutero, second, onomy, the second giving of the law unto the generation that came out of the wilderness, Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 12 on to verse 15. Again, Moses speaking the truth of the law unto the Jews, and unto the Jews, the actual Hebrews that are descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay, unto the Jews was given the law, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 12 on to verse 15. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor, and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. Okay? And verse 15. Right here. And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. 
Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Under the captivity of Egypt, okay, did the Jews ever have a day off? Did they ever rest while being servants to the pharaohs? No. See, the pharaohs, with the exception of the uh, pharaoh during the time of Joseph. But see, the Sabbath doesn't come in until the giving of the law. Does it? Does it? No. Okay? But, see, under the servitude of Egypt, the Jews were worked every day without a day of rest. Okay? Because they were servants in Egypt. Okay? Bond servants and stuff like that. Okay? They were. Hence, the Lord brought them out and gave them the Sabbath, a day of rest, because what uh, a lot of the uh, Jewish people knew only that you work all the time without a day of rest. Okay? And remember that thou was a servant in the land of Egypt. In the land of Egypt, they didn't have a day of rest. They didn't have a day of giving themselves to the Lord. And Lord, every single day, they were doing work for the Egyptians. Hence, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Those of you who work in the secular workforce, okay? Unless you've got shyster bosses who are concerned about their payroll of their employees, um, there are some jobs out there who would love to have you work seven days a week and kill yourself in the process. I remember there was talk about in Russia how they tried to extend the work week to a 10-day thing or something like that. Don't quote me on that. I heard that. But that Russia tried to make uh, the week 10 days or something like that. Okay, like I said, don't quote me on that. I heard that. There's seven days in a week. Okay, seven days. Okay. That's what the scriptures say. Thus saith the Lord, seven days. But there again, there again, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, okay? A day of rest where you don't work yourself to death. Why is that? Psalm 103. Psalm 103, okay? Psalm 103. There was a man who I used to talk to who um, went crazy, uh, who who worked quite often, but would have string of days where he would work 10, 12 days in a row without a day of rest and would kill him. Okay? That's not good. <laughs> okay? But Psalm 103, verses 10 on to verse 18. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And the Sabbath was given under the law unto the Jews. Okay? And the law has been fulfilled. But today, yes, we are to have at least one day of rest. We're going to get to that. Okay? Don't get ahead of me. Okay? Psalm 103. We want verses 10 on to verse 18. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Praise the Lord for that. Because if he did, you and I wouldn't be here. If he rewarded us according to our iniquities and dealt with us after our sins, then none of us would be here, and rightfully so. Okay? How many of you out there take the mercy of God for granted or the long suffering? He, you're lost, and you have today, and you're going to attack the church and the living God. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Fear, and he said unto man, the fear, behold, the fear of man. Uh, beg your pardon. And unto man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, 28. Okay? As far as the east is from the west, 
so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Again, love or fear. Check it out. Where we address this stupid heresy. How are you supposed to uh, love someone who you're afraid of? The fear of the Lord. That's wisdom. The fear of the Lord is required for him to save you. And you got someone, it's the love of God, not the fear of the Lord today. When Paul preached the fear of the Lord. Yeah, the stupid heresy that the fear of the Lord is not necessary for the Lord to save you today. Heresy. We address that in the video, Love or Fear. Check it out, okay? Verse 14. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. Okay? So he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. See, the fear of the Lord does, has not gone away within this dispensation. Okay? Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, serve one another in the fear of God. Everything that Paul preached was in the premise, with, was in the light of the fear of the Lord. Don't let these Christians come around saying, you don't need to fear God. You don't need to fear Lord. How are you supposed to love one you're afraid of? Get away from people who tell you stuff like that. The fear of the Lord. He can send you to hell and he has every right to. Without the fear of the Lord, there is no true salvation. Simple as that. That crosses Okay. Yes, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant and those that remember his commandments to do them. Okay? The fear of the Lord is a requirement. Okay? Now go back to Deuteronomy chapter 5. Okay? Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 5. And let's read this again. Okay? Verses 12 on to verse 15. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. Remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Because they, the Jews were basically worked to death without a day of rest. The Sabbath, a day of rest, was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And see, Catholics the Hasidim, the Kabbalistic Jews of today, have twisted it and said that man has been made for the Sabbath, making an idol out of the Sabbath. Okay? Now, go to Exodus chapter 31. Okay? Keeping the Sabbath was a requirement under the law. Under the law. Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31. And see, under the law, faith and works, with no eternal security under the law. Today, you come to the Lord according to his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord. You call upon his name and he save you. You are eternally secure. With the Holy Ghost, eternal security. Okay? Read Ephesians chapter 1 sometime. Okay? You are sealed until the day of redemption. You cannot become unsealed. It's not your salvation. It's His. Okay? 
But see, under the law, that permanent seal was not there. Hence, you had to keep the law. And you had to have faith in what God will do in you keeping the law. See? Whereas today, from faith to faith, like it says in Romans chapter 1, going from faith to faith. Okay? What is that talking about? Going from faith and what God will do under the law and what has been done. It is finished. It's very simple. But Exodus chapter 31, verses 14 on to verse 16. Yes, keeping the Sabbath was a requirement to be right with God, to be saved under the law. Exodus chapter 31, verses 14 on to verse 16. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore. Let's read verse 13. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, Sabbaths, plural, plural, days of rest associated with scriptural holy days. Not man-made holidays, you heretics, okay? But Sabbaths, plural, okay? Days of rest associated with certain feast days, holy days, set apart by the Lord, okay? Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is... Are you looking at that? For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Oh boy. A sign. A sign. So the Sabbath was a sign? For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Oh, don't worry. We're going to hit this again. Let's continue. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you, Holy unto you, the Jews. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. Okay? You didn't keep the Sabbath under the law. It was grounds to die. Okay? For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Cut off. Hold your place here. See, under the law, uh, salvation is of the Jews. Okay? Salvation is of the Jews. Uh, cut off. Go to John chapter 4. Hold your place there in uh, Exodus where we're looking at. John chapter 4. John chapter 4, we want verses 21 on to verse 24. <clears throat> okay. Oh, wait. Uh, John chapter 4, you idiot. <laughs> John chapter 4, verses 21 under verse 24. Jesus speaking unto the woman at the well. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Talking right there, he's talking about the dispensation that is to come. This dispensation that we are presently in, the time of the Gentiles. That's what he's making reference to. Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. It is by a Jew, the Jews, the Hebrews, that descend from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that our Lord Jesus... We already read it. Was it not uh, uh, evident that our, la our Lord sprang from Judah? Okay? Of the, Hebraic, of the Hebraic people that descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which descended from Shem? Okay? Okay? 
Get it? Salvation is of the Jews. So, under the Old Testament, okay? Well, well, well let's finish here in John chapter 4. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh, seeketh such to worship him. For the hour cometh, and now is, now is, the Father was there. Jesus Christ, who is the Father, was there presently in the flesh. Okay? The only way you can blaspheme the Holy Ghost is when Jesus Christ is there present physically in the flesh. Okay? That's the only time that the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost uh, applies. Okay? But the hour cometh, making reference unto the dispensation that would come after the law, this present dispensation. Okay? Verse 24. God is a spirit capital S A your NIV your ESV your new American standard remove the letter A hence God is spirit okay God is a spirit distinction you take out that A how are you supposed to know which God is which oh you gotta go to your Jesuit <coughs> excuse me your pastor in your church building, right? God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit, lowercase s, and in truth. See, under the law, okay, you wanted to know the true God of the scriptures, the true God. You had to go to the Jew. And that's talked about in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Okay? That is due to talked about in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Because they were, the Jew was the, at, under the law, was God's representative unto the nations. And if someone of the nations who wanted to be right with God, they had to go to the Jew. So if someone was cut off, okay? Go back, uh, back in uh, do, uh, Exodus chapter 31, okay? Verse 14 again, okay? Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth, defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from his among his people. So, if you were a Jew and cut off from among your people, and it was faith and works during this dispensation, and there was no eternal security. Keeping the Sabbath was a requirement under the law. If you didn't keep it, you were that was grounds worthy to die. Not only were, could you die, but if you defiled it, you would be cut off. And salvation is of the Jews. See, see how that works? Verse 15. Six days may, man, may work be done. But in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. On your day of rest, your day off, give it on to the Lord. Don't do your own will. Don't do your own stuff. Okay? Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. It was very serious under the law. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's continue. Wherefore... See that? In verse 16, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. Let's read verse 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. Okay? For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Sabbath was a sign for the Jews. Okay? And the law has been fulfilled. Okay? Today, even if you're a Jew, you do not have to keep the law to be saved or to be right with God. Why? Because it's finished. Okay? If you're a Hebrew, a true Hebrew, a true Jew, should you keep the Sabbath? Should you? Uh, I believe you should, sure, yes. Is it a requirement 
for your salvation today in this dispensation? We've already looked at it. No. No. It is not a requirement. If you're an actual Hebrew, if you're an actual Jew, should you keep the Sabbath? I believe you should. Just like I believe if you're an actual Hebrew, if you're an actual Jew, I also believe that you should honor the uh, Passover. Like it is written, yes. See, the thing is, is it a requirement for your salvation today? No. You're not going to go to hell today if you don't keep the Sabbath. You're not going to go to hell today if you don't keep the Passover or one of the scriptural holy days. It doesn't work that way today. you got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. You see? Okay? Sabbath was a sign unto the Jews. It's right there. In another dispensation. You have to write. See, the, the, the problem is, y'all ain't rightly dividing the word of truth. These scumbags, and I'm being polite, don't rightly divide the word of truth. Puritans kind of did a thing of dispensationalism. They did. But they taught the replacement of the Christ, Christian Sabbath that replaces the actual Sabbath. When the scriptures teach no such thing. I'm going to look at that. Keep, stay with me. Now let's go to Deut uh, Deuteronomy. Excuse me. Exodus chapter thir uh, 35. Verses 1 under verse 3. Again, more of this that it was a requirement under the law. Keeping the Sabbath like the holy days were requirements under the law. Okay? Today, when you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon the name of the Lord. He saved you to be right with God, to be saved today. You do not have to do these things to be saved, stay saved, or be right with God. To the Jew first. This is not only in the law. Of, in the law. Okay? Got to remember that. Let's continue. Deuter uh, Deuter Deuteronomy. Excuse me. Exodus chapter 35, verses 1, on to verse 3. Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord hath commanded, that ye should do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be there shall be to you an holy day. A Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. Okay? Alright? It was a requirement under the law. And note that thing about unholy day. A day set apart for the Lord. And see, like I said, especially a certain select few of these King James Bible-believing Christians will take this and twist it in order to justify their shameful idolatry of the Catholic God and worship and make a day, an idol out of a day that our Lord doesn't approve of. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Shame on you. Shame on you. And they twist the scriptures to justify it too. Shame on them. Shame on you. Shame on you. Okay? Shame on y'all who do that. Now now go to Deuteronomy chapter 15 again. Uh, uh, I keep saying Deuteronomy. Beg your pardon. Numbers chapter 15. We're driving home now the fact that it was a requirement under the law, okay? We first saw how man made an idol out of the Sabbath, okay? Man will do that out of their man-made holidays. They make them an idol, okay? Okay, man made an idol out of the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was a day of rest because the children of Israel were taken out of Egypt where they didn't have a day of rest. Okay? 
Bond servants, servants, working 24 hours a day, maybe. Seven days a week. I'm sure they gave them time to rest, to sleep, but they didn't have a day to focus on the Lord. Okay? All right? And we have already seen that. And it was a requirement under the law, under pains of death, and also if you defiled it, you were cut off, and salvation is of the Jews. Okay? We're driving this home. We're going to beat this horse a little. So you get it. Okay? Numbers 15, verses 32 on to verse 36. Okay? Numbers chapter 15, verses 32 on to verse 36. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron, and unto all the congregation. And they put him in ward, because it was not declared what should be done to him. And the Lord said unto Moses, The man shall be surely put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. And all the congregation brought him without the camp, and stoned him with stones, and he died, as the Lord commanded Moses. So, see, if you broke the Sabbath, kindling sticks, uh, getting sticks, okay? If you broke the Sabbath, it was grounds for death. Why do you want to go under a law that would be means for you to die if you broke it? The wages of sin is death. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Cause for death and to be cut off under a dispensation where eternal security was not there. Okay? For the Jews. All right? And one more on this. One more on this. Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 13. Okay? Has it not been already established that the Sabbath was a requirement under the law? Hmm? Has it not already been established that the Sabbath was given unto the Jews for a sign? Okay? Has it not already been established? It has been. Okay? It has been. But has it not already been established? Okay? But let's, let's drive this home. Nehemiah chapter 13, verses 15 on to verse 22. Okay. In those days saw I and Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath, and bringing in sheaves, and lading asses, and also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens, which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. Now you got to remember too, this, uh, these are Jews that were coming out of captivity of Babylon, okay? And while they were in Babylon, they were made to serve the king of Babylon, okay? So they were in Babylon for 70 years. That's a generation, okay? That's at least at least one generation at the very least, okay? But that is a generation, okay? So these Jews being brought out of captivity on, in Babylon were not aware of the true precepts of the Sabbath. That's why Ezra is before Nehemiah. Okay? Let's continue. There dwelt men of Tyre also therein, which brought fish and all manner of ware and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. So those who were not of the Jews were causing the Jews to sin by selling them things on the Sabbath day. The guys of Tyre, you can't really prove that they did it uh, maliciously, but hey, because... The Sabbath was a sign unto the Jews. Okay? So the guys of Tyre is like, hey, sure, sure. But see, the Sabbath was a sign unto the Jews. And you got to keep in mind that the Jews that were in this time of the times of Ezra and Nehemiah were coming out of captivity under Babylon. Okay? So what does that mean? A lot of these guys were ignorant of the true law. Okay? You got to remember that. You got to remember that. A lot of them were, even though they had prophets like Ezekiel and prophets speaking onto them, okay? But there was a, a lot of them were ignorant. You also got to remember, too, that a lot of the seed of Israel had mingled themselves with the Gentiles, with other nations, 
which was uh, which was uh, they were not supposed to do as Jews. Why? Because the Savior, the Mashiach, who is a Jew, were to come of the line of the Hebrew. That's why, especially under the law, there was not to be any intermingling with the Jews and the nations as far as marriage. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. But see, these men of Tyre, you can't really prove that they did this maliciously. Even though you can link to Tyre about um, uh, Ezekiel chapter 28, the king of Tyre, okay? That's, a, that's an argument... Eh, but nevertheless, verse 17, Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, What evil thing is this that ye do and profane the Sabbath day? Did not our fathers thus and did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon this city, Jerusalem? Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark, before the Sabbath, I commanded that the gates should be shut and charged that they should not be opened till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants set I at the, at the gates that there, should be, that there should no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. So the merchants and sellers of all kind of ware lodged without Jerusalem once or twice. Then I testified against them and said unto them, Why lodge ye about the wall? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. From that time forth, they came no more on the Sabbath. What are we reading to here? Of 22. And I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse themselves and that they should come and keep the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day. Remember me, O God, concerning this also, and spare me according to the, the greatness of thy mercy. Okay? So Nehemiah mentions that hey all this came upon us because we didn't obey the law because it was faith and works under the law okay okay showing to you the severity of the sabbath of not keeping it under the law and go to ezekiel chapter 20 ezekiel chapter 20 okay we already read how the sabbath was assigned unto the jews under the law Okay? Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 11 and 12. Ezekiel 20, verses 11 and 12. Uh, let's read verses 10 on to verse 12. Uh, actually, uh, I'm looking at it. Let's read verses 10 on to verse 13. Sorry for that big part. Wherefore, I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statutes and shewed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. But, as Nehemiah mentioned, the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes, and they despised my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. And my Sabbaths they greatly polluted. Then said I, I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. One second, brother. Sorry about that. Again, we see that the, sh the Shabbat, the Sabbath, was a sign unto the Jews, unto the Jews, under the law. And remember, this thing about signs, okay, this thing about signs, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 on to verse 24. For after, the, for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew, God, knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. The Greek is a Gentile. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, both Jews and Greeks, 
call called the way of the cross, not that heretical Calvinistic elect and non-elect, okay? The called. The way of the cross is the way of the called, okay? Both Jews and Greeks, different dispensation. But the Jews require a sign, okay? And remember, like, like I had mentioned, go now to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 and 8. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 8. Under the law, the, the Jews were given the statutes, the commandments, the oracles of God. Unto them were the oracles of God committed, okay? Why? To be a sign unto them, yes, but also why? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 8. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes, and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great, who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? For what nation is there so great, that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? See, even under the Old Testament, under the law, the Jewish people were called to be God's witnesses unto the nations. Similar to us, the church of God, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, which is the pillar and ground of truth, comprised of both Jews and Gentiles. See, that, that idea that God has a people called out to be witnesses unto those of the nations, those who are not of us, was even found in the Old Testament. Okay? It wasn't just for their benefit but that they may be a witness and a testimony unto the world, unto the nations about them. Can you see that? Okay? Now, go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Okay? Galatians chapter 3, the perfect place where you run into Judaizers who want to bring you under the law. Whether they want to bring you under a Kabbalistic type of law, which is not true Judaism, or they want to bring you to under the law of the Catholics or of the Puritans, okay? Galatians is your book where you combat this, okay? Galatians chapter 3, verses 23 on to verse 29. Remember, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. See, we're not lawless or without law. We have law that we, the law of Christ, which Paul describes for us in Romans chapter 13, okay, which he describes for us uh, for this dispensation, okay? All right? And that doesn't include keeping the Sabbath, okay? Idolatry, uh, worshiping false gods, absolutely, okay? Uh, Paul talks about that in depth, uh, about, you know, worshiping idols. God forbid, you know. And what do you think what these guys teach is? It's idolatry, okay? But see, keeping the Sabbath is not a requirement today. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile, okay? But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all children by God of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek pertaining to salvation. Culturally, blah, yes, that's a different thing. Okay? There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Okay? And that one thing there about to the Jew first uh, and also to the Greek, uh, Romans chapter 1, just one verse. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Okay? Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. 
For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith in what God will do to faith in what God has done. It is finished. Okay? As it is written, the just shall live by faith. And we have in the Old Testament how the Jews couldn't really keep the Sabbath perfectly. It was up and down, up and down. Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Acts chapter 15. Again, like I said, we go through a lot of this uh, in the video exposing Mark the Mess, which will be in the description box. Acts chapter 15, verses 100, verse 11. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised, after the manner of Moses ye cannot be saved. Wherefore, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small disputation, dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phineas and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. So, talking about how God is magnified through something that he used you for, uh, dear friend there, mate, is not pride. Okay? You understand? Oh, I'm speaking pridefully, right? Give me a break. Get over yourself, okay? <clears throat> but there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders. And see, the argument will come in, well, then not the, the Jews don't have to do this today to be saved? No, they don't. But see, there are some that saying that in here they will come and try to twist this and say, well, there's one way of salvation to the Jew and also another way to the Gentile. That's a mode of hyper-dispensationalism. That there are two bodies, one of the Jew and one of the Gentile. But uh, That's heresy. No. There's one way of salvation today in this dispensation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greeks are Gentile, okay? Okay? And that doesn't involve keeping the law. Okay? Let's continue. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God which knoweth the hearts bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Even as they. The Jews, we have the testimony that the Jews could not keep the law perfectly. And they got ridiculous about the Sabbath. Getting tedious making it more complex than it needed to be. Hence, making an idol out of it. The Sabbath, which is Saturday, is not a requirement for salvation today. To the Jew first, 
Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? And also to the Gentile. Sabbath is not a requirement. Okay? Sabbath is not a requirement. But see, the heresy now comes in. The heresy comes now when you got people saying that, well, that was for the Jews, yes. But today, today, we have the Christian Sabbath. Yeah, that's how it used to be. See, the Catholics are do not rightly divide the word of truth. But see, they teach replacement theology. And they want to replace Sunday worship, which they call the Christian Sabbath for the actual Sabbath, which the scriptures does not support. And they, they mention the first day of the week, okay? First day of the week, all right? Let's go to this. First day of the week, uh, Mark chapter 16, okay? Now, there is legitimacy to the first day of the week. And let me first, let me say right away, there is nothing wrong with you wanting to put aside your day to worship the Lord on Sunday, the first day of the week. There is nothing wrong with that. Okay, if you want to do that, knock yourself out. If you want to do it on the Sabbath, knock yourself out. Okay? We're going to look at what Paul said about how one man esteemeth one day above another. Okay? As a day to worship the Lord. Okay? We're going to look at that. But let's uh, this thing about the first day of the week. Mark chapter 16, verses 1 on verse 8. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, which is Sunday, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, and he saith unto them, Be not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen, he is not here. Behold, the place where the Lord, where they lay him, Go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, and as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. So you see the first day of the week, uh, when the Lord was resurrected, the first day of the week, Sunday, okay? If you want to honor the Lord on Sunday when he was resurrected, great! Go for it! Great! Go for it! But it is not the Sabbath. It's not the Sabbath. Okay? But this shows that it was the first, first day of the week. Okay? First day of the week. Absolutely. Now go to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Okay? Acts chapter 20. Again, first day of the week. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 7. After the uproar was ceased, the one in Ephesia, uh, Ephesus, where people were saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them, and departed for to go into Macedonia. And when he had gone over those parts, and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece, and there abode three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him, as he was about to sail into Syria, he proposed to return through Macedonia. And there accompanied him into Asia, so Sopater of Berea, and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus, and Secundus, and Secundus, and Gaius, of Derbe, and Timotheus, and of Asia, Tychicus and Trophimus. These going before tarried for us at Troas. 
After we sailed away from Philippi, after the days of unleavened bread, and came unto them to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Boy, you want to talk about long preaching. Yeah, some of you gripe about two hours. Yeah. Yeah, and we were to read on to verse 7. Now, look at verse 7. Upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, that is the day on the first day of the week, on this particular circumstance, when they got together. Okay? Now, the first day of the week, when the Lord was resurrected. Yes, that's fine. Praise the Lord. But show me where it's commanded to meet on the first day of the week. It isn't. It isn't. They thought it meet because it's Sunday, the first day of the week, the Lord's day, the Lord's day. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. Okay? Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. The Lord's day when he was resurrected. Sunday. Okay? And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. The Lord's day. So these people were getting together on the Lord's day. Were they commanded to do so? No. They chose the Lord's day. It was meat, obviously. The day he resurrected. Obviously, yes. But, is it a replacement for the Sabbath? The Lord's day. No, it isn't. The Sabbath was a sign unto the Jews. Okay? The Lord's day, when he rose, rose from the dead. The first day of the week. Sunday, the day after the Sabbath. They chose... To worship on that day. To get together to break bread. Is that a commandment? That we are to be getting together on the first day of the week? For everybody? Every every week? No. Show it to me! It's not there. It's not there. It's not there, dear friend. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Or, excuse me. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 on to verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 on to verse 3. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, lest let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And when I come, Whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, then will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. So there again you see the gathering together on the first day of the week. Was it a commandment? Is it commanded to worship, gather together on the first day of the week? No. That's when they chose to. Yes, it was proper. Yes, it was meat. Because the resurrection, the Lord's day. Absolutely. Is that a replacement for the Sabbath? No. Because the Sabbath was a mandatory thing under the law to be right with God, to be saved in that dispensation. And if you didn't do it, we've already looked, you would be, number one, you could lose your life or be cut off. And salvation is of the Jews. But they chose the first day of the week. Now, granted, granted, it's meat, it's proper. If you want to meet on Sunday, Praise the Lord! If you want to have fellowship with one another in somebody's house and worship the Lord, read scripture, uh, sing hymns, great! It's not a commandment. It's not a commandment. And, 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 and then they, they take this and then they go to Hebrews chapter 10. Go back to Hebrews chapter 10. And this uh, they do this to justify their ridiculous phallus houses, their church buildings, which come from paganism, Catholicism, they come to Hebrews chapter 10, 
uh, verses 19 on to verse 25. And see, they associate this with getting together in a building. With a building. Hence, they make the building necessary for... Catholicism teaches that you gotta, without church, there is no salvation. And they mean a building. These Christians today, these, I've heard it. These Christians say unchurched people, that a church building is uh, necessary for your salvation. And then they come to Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 19 on to verse 25. The book of Hebrews, written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holy, holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith, Without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Without wavering. Because they have to endure to the end to be saved during the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew chapter 24. Although which a lot of these heretics go to. See, you got to keep the law today and you got to endure to the end to be saved. No! You don't have to keep the law today to be saved. Because if you are truly saved in this dispensation, you are sealed. Under the law, there is no permanent seal. Under the... Uh, 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 during the time of Jacob's trouble, except for the 144,000 Jews, there is no eternal security. In the kingdom of heaven, there is no eternal security. Why? Because it's works. It's works. Our Lord talks about those being cast off into outer darkness, okay? Yeah, it's works during the kingdom of heaven, okay? You don't need faith when you can see him. Okay? You don't need faith. You have to work during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? All right? All right? And remember, during the kingdom of heaven, there is still sin. Okay? Because man is sinful. It's not until Satan is totally defeated after the thousand years and the new heaven and new earth where there is no sin. Okay? The seventh and final dispensation. Okay? In this dispensation, there is eternal security. Okay? And in the kingdom of heaven, we who came back with him will be as the angels. Yes. But during the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. It's all works. Okay? It's all works. You can be cast out of the kingdom of heaven. The thousand year reign. Okay? You gotta remember that. That's why the law will be there. There, there will be no more sacrifices for sins, but offering odors and stuff like that to God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is on the throne. Okay? Okay? But during the time of Jacob's trouble, that mark of the beast is there. And if anyone, anyone takes the mark of the beast, they go straight to hell. So, during the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching, the day approaching, the day of our Lord of the Lord coming back with us who went up with him, you know, who he, whom he called up. When he come back, he's going to come back with those of us whom he said, come up hither at the redemption of the purchased possession. See, we, when we come back, we're going to be like the angels. See, that's why you need to get saved today, that you can be redeemed at the redemption of the purchased possession. But see, verse 25 is being told unto the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And... Unless they mingle together themselves, they will not be able to mingle with anyone who is just anyone who is a Hebrew. Why? Because the mark of the beast is there. Okay? 
So the assembling of the Hebrews of themselves under the during the time of Jacob's uh, trouble is imperative. Why? Because who knows? They might have their own food that they have without the mark of the beast. They might have uh, sustenance without the mark of the beast. See. So it will be necessary for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble to get together themselves who are waiting for that day approaching for the Lord to come back who have not fallen away, who have not taken the mark of the beast. That's why that's in the book of Hebrews. And these Christians use that to say that, well, you're, assemb you're not assembling yourself together. Okay? It's not written for us today. Hebrews chapter 10 Verse 25 is for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble where it will be a necessity for those who have not taken the mark of the beast who are of the Jews to get together to keep each other uh, edified uh, to, until that day approaching that our Lord comes back with us. It's for a different dispensation. It doesn't apply for us today. Okay? 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 Now, I'm going to read to you a little from the Roman Catholic Catechism. Okay? We're going to... And, and see this? See that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Queen of the world. Queen of heaven. The Roman Catholic Mary. Summer Amos. With the nimbus. A bigger nimbus showing deity than the nimbus which is upon the little baby. Ah. Uh, this is Semiramis. That little baby is Tammuz. One second, brethren. All right. We are going to be reading from where my finger is down on this page. Pause that and read it if you can. Can you see? Can you see that? Yeah. Pause that and read it. Okay. And then on the next page, we're going to read. From the top down to where my finger is. Pause that and read it. Okay. And we're also going to read from um, here, from where my finger is, right here, onto this opposing page. Okay. So pause that and read it. Yeah, I've I know my enemy. Yeah. All right? Check this out. Check this out. Okay? Here's what Catholicism teaches. The Lord's day, the day which the Lord has made, this is the day which the Lord hath made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. The day of the resurrection, the new creation. Jesus rose from the dead on the first day of the week. Because it is the first day, the day of Christ's resurrection, recalls the first creation, because it is the eighth day, following the Sabbath. It symbolizes the new creation ushered in by Christ's resurrection. For Christians, and remember, Catholics are Christians, it has become the first of all days, the first of all feasts, the Lord's Day, Sunday. We all gather on the day of the sun. You see that? See that? See that right there? See how that's spelled? The day of the sun. The sun god. Ra! Baal worship. We all gather on the day of the sun. S-U-N. For it is the first day after the Jewish Sabbath. But also the first day. When God separating matter from darkness made the world. And on the same day, Jesus Christ, our Savior, rose from the dead. They, they blatantly of the day of the sun. Okay? Not S-O-N, S-U-N. Sunday, fulfillment of the Sabbath. Sunday is expressly distinguished from the Sabbath, which it follows chronologically every week. For Christians, it is ceremonial, it's ceremonial observance replaces that of the Sabbath. Chapter and verse, please. 
So Sunday worship replaces that of the Sabbath. No, it doesn't. We're going to look into the scriptures about this, okay? In Christ's Passover, Sunday fulfills the spiritual truth of the Jewish Sabbath and announces man's eternal rest in God. For worship under the law prepared for the mystery of Christ and what was done there prefigured some aspects of Christ. Those who lived according to the old order of things have come to a new hope, no longer keeping the Sabbath, but the Lord's day in which our life is blessed by him and by his death. The celebration of Sunday observes the moral commandment inscribed by nature in the human heart to render to God an outward, visible, public, and, and regular worship as a sign of this his universal beneficence to all a sign a sign huh a sign who requires a sign a jew but yet these guys call themselves jews and they are not the catholics don't say we are jewish no but they teach replacement theology Hence, they are the new Jews. As a sign of, this, of his universal beneficence to all, Sunday worship fulfills the moral command of the Old Covenant, taking up its rhythm and spirit in the weekly celebration of the Creator and Redeemer of his people. And as we look, yes, the disciples were getting together on the first day of the week, but it's not a commandment to do it on Sunday. They chose Sunday. It's not commanded. It's not commanded by the Father in the scriptures to work, to meet together on Sunday. It's not a commandment. They chose to do it. But it's not a commandment as it was the Sabbath. Okay? Now, this practice of the Christian assembly dates from the beginning of the apostolic age. And right here, they're quoting Hebrews. The letter to the Hebrews reminds the faithful not to neglect to meet together as a habit of some, but to encourage one another. And I get, we just covered that. It's for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble because uh, that man of sin, that son of perdition, who will be representing Catholicism, okay, <laughs> okay, who will be a pope, I believe, still, okay, yeah, uh, those Jews have to meet together for sustenance, for worship of the true God, because that man of sin is going to proclaim himself to be God, okay? We've already covered that. Tradition preserves the memory of an ever-timely exhortation. Come to church early. Approach the Lord and confess your sins. Repent in prayer. Be present at the sacred and divine liturgy. Conclude its prayer and do not leave before the dismissal. We have often said, This day is given to you for prayer and rest. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, how many of you Christians who go to your buildings, uh, how many of you hear that? Before the door is open, right? Confess your sins, repent in prayer. Be present at the sacred and divine liturgy. Pay attention when the pastor's uh, speaking, right? Conclude in prayer and don't leave before you're dismissed. <laughs> See what I wrote right there? Yeah, and this is what the Catholics teach, and this is exactly what the, the, the Christians and the Lutheran and the Methodists and the Baptists and the Presbyterians, that's exactly what they practice too. Hmm. A parish is a definite community of the Christian faithful established on a stable basis within a peculiar particular church and they mean a building the pastoral care of the parish is entrusted to a pastor as its own shepherd under the authority of the diocesan bishop 
not under the head of Christ, but under the head of another man. It is the place where all the faithful can be gathered together for the Sunday celebration of the Eucharist. The parish initiates the Christian people into the ordinary expression of the liturgical life. It gathers them together in the celebration. It teaches Christ's saving doctrine. It practices the charity of the Lord and good works and brotherly love. Get a load of this. How many of you Christians uh, who go to church buildings, how many of you hear this from your pastor? Okay, you, you Christians in the buildings, you do the come to church early. Okay, but pay attention when the pastor's preaching. Okay, don't leave till you're dismissed. That's what you do in your buildings, your phallus houses. Absolutely. But how many of you have heard this? You cannot pray at home as at church. Really? Really, huh? It's right there, man. Where is that? It's right there. You see that? See that red stuff? Let me see. See that? It's right there. How many of you have heard that? Better. You, you can't pray the same at home as you do in church. And they mean a building. Really. Where there is a great multitude, where exclamations are cried out to God as for one great heart, as from one great heart, and where there is something more, the union of minds, the accord of souls, the bond of charity, the prayers of the priests, and there are no priests today. The Sunday obligation. Okay, the Sunday obligation. The precept of the church specifies the law of the Lord more precisely. Really? Law of the Lord for us to meet on Sunday within the, this dispensation? Show it to me. Show it to me in the scriptures where they say, Thou shalt meet on Sunday. Yes, they did meet on Sunday. Yes, they did. But that's not a commandment. It's not a law. They didn't command to meet on Sunday. That's when they chose. Yes, it's meet. Yes, it's proper. But it's not a commandment to meet on Sunday. Show it to me. Show it to me in the scriptures. It's not there. Oh, Paul said, when you meet together to, on the first day of the week, that's not a commandment. He, we are not commanded to meet every Sunday. Okay? Should you? The Lord's Day, it's meet proper. It's meet and proper, yes. But is it a commandment for today? No, it's not. No, it's not. On Sundays and other holy days of obligation... The faithful are bound to participate in the Mass. You know what are the two biggest days of obligation unto the Catholic? Christ Mass and Easter. And those of you wicked Catholic idolaters who called save people lost for attacking the satanic, disgusting holiday of Christ Mass where were you to defend your people's God-given right on Easter? Where were you to defend that and call safe people lost who attack Easter? Where were you then? Well, that'd be a little too obvious of who you actually serve, isn't it? Yeah. The precept of participating in the Mass is satisfied by assistance at a at a mass which is celebrated anywhere in a Catholic rite, either on the holy day or on the evening of the preceding day. Holy day, huh? What is a holy day? Okay, what is a holy day? The Sunday Eucharist is the foundation and confirmation of all Christian practice. 
For this reason, the faithful are obliged to participate in the Eucharist on days of obligation, unless excused for a serious reason. For example, illness, the care of infants, or dispensed by their own pastor. Those who deliberately fail in this obligation commit a grave sin. So, unless you're worshiping on Sunday, accord, according to their own words, you're in sin. See, these guys are replacement theology. They, man, has taken Sunday worship and replaced it with what God said for the Jews on the Sabbath. And you're not going to find it within the scriptures. Yes, the disciples met on the first day of the week. Yes, fine, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. But not as by a commandment. They were not commanded on the first day of the week to keep the first day of the week as a day of worship. They weren't. Now, that's from Catholics. Puritans, just a little, just a little, just a little. I, I quit reading this. I keep re I quit reading this because this this got really really um, really bony. Okay, we're going to read a little on this for uh, one page, and um, and we're going to read on to oh. Uh, well, well, here. We're going to read this for sure in this book. Okay, right here. Right here. Okay, right here. All right. And here, because I don't know where we're going to quit, this page. Okay? Check this out. Check this out. And the majority of this book is about now he switches to how Christians are to observe the Christian Sabbath on Sunday. Almighty God will have himself worshipped, not only in a private manner, not only in a private manner by private persons and families, but also in a more public sort of all the godly joined together in a visible church. That by this means he may be known not only to be the God and Lord of every singular person, but also the creature, but also of the creatures of the whole universal world. Question. But why do not we Christians under the new keep the Sabbath on the same seventh day on which it was kept under the Old Testament? I answer. Because our Lord Jesus, who is the Lord of the Sabbath, and whom the law itself commands us to hear, did alter it from that seventh day to this first day of the week on which we keep the Sabbath. He rose on the first day of the week. But he didn't command the disciples to worship him on, the, on Sunday. Find it for me! After the death, burial, and resurrection, find it for me! Where we are commanded to worship on Sunday! Yes, they got together on Sunday. Yes, they did. But we're not commanded to do that. Okay? For the holy evangelist notes that our Lord came into the midst of the holy assembly on the first, on the two first days of the two weeks immediately following his resurrection and then blessed the church, breathed on the apostles, the Holy Ghost, and gave them the ministerial keys and power of binding and remitting sins. And so it is most probable he did in a solemn manner every first day of the week. Yea, hath God said. Did you hear that? During the 40 days he continued on earth between his resurrection and ascension for the 50th day after, being the first day of the week, the apostles were assembled. During which time he gave commandment unto the apostles and spake unto them those things which appertain to the kingdom of God. That is, instructed them how they should 
throughout how they should, throughout the churches which were to be converted, change the Sabbath to the Lord's day. Chapter and verse? Chapter and verse where the Lord said to change the Sabbath onto Sunday. And then this guy here, he uh, quotes uh, Hebrews 5, 6, 7, 11, and 12, which we already looked at. Okay? That, that's enough for, of this. Uh, like I said, I quit reading this because of that heresy. Okay? Turning, changing what God has said. The Sabbath was for the Jews. And saying that today, we as the Church of the Living God... The Sabbath is on Sunday. What's this? Why are they doing that? Because the son of perdition, who's going to come in and think, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. First of all, what say the scriptures about days where we worship the Lord? Go to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Okay? Romans chapter 14, verses 1 under verse 13. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Uh, the uh, dietary restrictions do not apply for us today. Why? Because all things that are created by God are good and sanctified by prayer and thanksgiving. Okay? The uh, Old Testament dietary restrictions do not apply for us today to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? Why? Because it is sanctified by prayer. You read 1 Timothy, what is it, chapter 4? Okay? Alright? So, if you want to eat pork, have a, bake, a back bacon sandwich, hey, knock yourself out. You want to eat shrimp? Knock yourself out. You want to eat bat? Cockroaches. I've eaten cockroaches before. Uh, you want to eat whatever you want to eat. It's not going to affect your salvation. I might look at you funny because you're eating that. It's like, why are you eating that? But I'm not going to judge you over what you eat. I'm not supposed to do that, okay? Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up. For God is able to make him stand. Right here. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Okay? Hey, you want to set apart every day, which we are, we have seven days a week, where you concentrate everything on the Lord? Great. Or if you want to do it on Sunday? You want to do it on the Sabbath? You want to do it on Tuesday? Thursday, Friday? It doesn't matter. Okay? He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not, to the Lord he giveth, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Where, whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. Okay? So, looking at verses 5 and 6 again, One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. They chose to worship, get together on Sunday. Yes, that's meet and proper. But is that a commandment? No. Paul just said, whatever day is, you know, be persuaded in your own mind. Okay? And we are not to judge people on that. Hey, if you are of the church of the living God, and you want to assign to your, you want to set apart Sunday. It's like, Brad, yeah, Sunday. That's the day that me and my family, we, we choose Sunday to stay at home, read the scriptures, sing hymns, and just give it to the Lord. We choose Sunday. Good for you. Praise the Lord. 
I'm not going to judge you. Hey, if you want to keep the Sabbath, you want to do it on Saturday? It's like, hey, I, I want to do it on the Sabbath. Good for you. Praise the Lord. You want to do it on Tuesday? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. See, and also this is giving to us that, yes, there ought to be a day. A day out of the seven days. There ought to be at least one day where we focus everything we are onto the Lord. Okay? Hence, see, these people with this heresy come in and try to twist that and say, that's the Sabbath. It's not a Sabbath. The Sabbath was given on to the Jews. Okay? A day of rest. Okay? A holy day set apart. Yes. For a day of rest. Yes. For a day of rest. Yes. But it is not the Sabbath. The Sabbath was required for salvation under the law, and you could die. And as we have heard, Catholics teach it, if you don't go to church on Sunday, it's a sin. Hence, going to church on Sunday is a requirement. Not a requirement. It's not a requirement. Any day that you choose to give unto the Lord, to be the Lord's day, whether it's actually the Lord's day, Sunday, whether it's the Sabbath, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it doesn't matter. Okay? Let every man be persuaded in his own mind. Okay? Verse 9. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us, there, let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. And I'm going to uh, suggest unto you that those who will get all up in arms about Christ Mass, they're the ones putting a stumbling block in people's way. Okay? And speaking of that, Speaking of that, go to Colossians chapter 2. Go to Colossians chapter 2. Okay? A holy day is a day set apart for the Lord. Well, why can't I have Christ Mass as a holy day? Really? Really? Jesus wasn't born on that day. We are not commanded to worship or to commemorate his birth, rather his death, and all the paganism that is associated with it. Get over yourself. But, okay, they go to Romans chapter 14 to, to justify that, okay? But here's where they really go to. And herein, you know, the Sunday, the Christian Sabbath. Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 17. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, which the holy, which the holy day of Christmas is, okay? After the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Okay? For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off of the body of the sin, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Note the, the way that Paul is saying these things. Circumcision. Note this, okay? Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Now, verse 14, he's making mention about that was which was under the law. Okay? Are you with me? Verse 15, having spoiled principalities and powers, 
He made a shoe of them open, openly, triumphing over them in it. Verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of, a, of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days which are a shadow of things to come. But the body of Christ. But the body is of Christ. Uh, Catholic God, pagan idolaters who want to worship on Christ Mass, okay? They come to verse 16 and call Christ Mass a holy day. Which those of you Christians who get left behind, okay? You watch. I bet you when that man of sin, the son of perdition, is revealed, there is going to be a big to-do about Christ Mass. You watch, those of you Christians who think you're of the church of the living God, when you get left behind and you see that man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to make you a big to-do about Christmas. And you call that a holy day? Look, look at that verse there, genius. Okay? Judge you in meat. Meat. As of keeping kosher in drink. Like, oh, the vow of the Nazarite or something like that, right? Or in respect of a holy day. What are the holy days according to Scripture? Oh, those be, uh, in you know, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 4, the holy feasts of the Lord. A holy day is a day set aside for the Lord. But what are the holy days? Oh, Passover, unleavened bread, feast of first fruits, the feast of harvest, uh, the blowing of trumpets, the day of atonement, the feast of tabernacles. Those are holy days. See, Verse 16, have you, know, have you noticed that what he's referring to are all Jewish? Hmm? Have you noticed that? The holy days that Paul's talking about are reference onto the holy days given in Scripture, which were a requirement under the law to keep but are not a requirement for us today in this dispensation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Again, if you're Jewish, an actual Hebrew, you want to keep these holy days, go ahead. Do I believe you should? Sure. It's not a requirement for your salvation. And see, in context, Paul's talking about when you got Judaizers wanting to come and bring you under the law to have no one judge you in respect of meat, drink, or of a holy day, or of a new moon, or a Sabbath. It's in context and reference to the holy days given unto the Jews, not man made ones that worship Satan. And not the Christian Sabbath. As we read in Romans chapter 14. Any day you choose to worship the Lord, do it. Okay? Do it. Do it. Your argument, well, why can't I do it on Christmas? Why Christmas? Knowing with all the evil that is associated with it. And these guys who want to call save people lost for attacking Christ Mass, they do exactly what they accuse others of. They use philosophy and vain deceit. They put a stumbling block in people's way. Beware of them and their pagan idolatry. They don't they have no idea what Yes, you have the liberty, but is it is it expedient? Does it edify? <laughs> and like I said, you watch, you Christians that get left behind. That man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to make a big to-do about Christ Mass because those are the big two holidays, holy days unto the Catholic. And you, a select few who called save people lost for attacking Christmas, where were you to defend Easter? Where were you? That'd be a little too obvious, wouldn't it? Yeah. And remember too, uh, in Isaiah chapter 1, Isaiah chapter 1, we're almost done. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 15. I personally believe 
that the Lord hates these man-made holy days. I really do. Prove it to you. Well, here, I'll give you some instruction in righteousness here in Isaiah chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 15. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of your God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, said the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Now this is under the law given unto the Jew. But our instruction in righteousness, uh, uh, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Who said that Sunday is the required day of worship? Man. That's who. Not the Lord. Yes, yes, we looked at it. They got together on the first day of the week. Yes. But not by commandment. Not by commandment. <clears throat> yeah. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons, the Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity. Even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts. Christ's mass. My soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. And as far as the Christian Sabbath, Sunday worship, Look at look at how look, look at how they, they they we heard it. If you don't go to church on Sunday, you're in sin. You gotta be there before the doors open. Right? You're in sin if you aren't going to church on Sunday. We heard it. Where do you think these church buildings get that? Right here. Not from the scriptures. It's whatever day you choose to worship the Lord. Whatever day you choose. You're going to choose a day that's laced with paganism? You have the liberty to do so. Yes, you do. But it's not going to profit you. And it's not expedient. And you actually, I believe, offend our Lord. But yes, you have the liberty to do there. You know, you, you guys who say, oh, it's a liberty. You don't even know what liberty is. Rather, you use it for your idolatry. Okay? Uh, and Isaiah chapter 58, while we're on this, okay? Isaiah chapter 58. It's whatever day you want to choose to set aside. And yes, we, uh, it's evidence that, yes, we are to set aside a day for the Lord. But it is not the Sabbath. The Sabbath was given unto the Jews. Okay? Isaiah chapter 58, verses 3 under verse 7. Wherefore have we fasted, they say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness, Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast as I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an, and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is this is not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide that not thine, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? And look at verses 13 and 14. 
in Isaiah 58. Okay. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. See, it's on to the Jews. The Sabbath was for the Jews, not for us today. There is no Christian Sabbath. It's whatever day you choose. Okay? Okay? And this, you can't pray at home as you do in church. The body is the church of the living God. And you have God within you. What better way to pray than a solemn prayer by yourself unto the Lord? Give me a break. Give me a break. Okay? Give me a break. And don't forget, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. It is Satan who is all about this Christian Sabbath. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 12, on to verse 20. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. I say again, let no man think me a fool, if otherwise, yet as a fool, receive me, that I may boast myself a little. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly, in this confidence of boasting, seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will all glory also. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. Willing to listen to that? Yes, yes. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage. <laughs> bring you into bondage. It, you're in sin if you don't go to church every Sunday. You got to go to church. You got to be with uh, people in order to pray right. You got to have the Eucharist. Every Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Bringing you into bondage. And as you heard, Catholics teach that you're in sin if you don't go to church every Sunday. And Galatians, of course, chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 5. Oh, that's Corinthians, excuse me. Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit, capital S, by the works of the law, by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Hmm. Who has bewitched you? And see, a big thing to do with this, the whole thing about, you know, Brother Alberto Rivera talked about how Catholicism was big on replacing the Sabbath with Sunday worship, the Christian Sabbath, okay? And today, like I, we, we've already shown, it's not a requirement today 
to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, okay? It's not a requirement today. But see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the Sabbath, the law is going to return. They're going to be doing animal sacrifices under the, uh, according to the scriptures during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? And then midway during that time of Jacob's trouble, that man of sin is going to appear, okay? All right? And today, if you want to worship on Sunday, which, yes, they got together first day of the week. It wasn't commanded. It's not a commandment to worship on the first day of the week. That's what they did. Is it a good idea? Sure. Is that where they get it from? Yes, but it's not a commandment. Lying. Lying. It's not a commandment. Okay? Any day that seems right unto you, okay, that's what the scriptures teach. Okay? All right? And about this thing, about going if, you know, like Seventh-day Adventists and like Mark the Mess, people are like, you got to keep the law in order to be saved. Yeah. Uh, Galatians 5, verses 1 on to verse, uh, verse 9. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled, and be not entangled, Again, with a yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, go under the law, Christ shall profit you nothing. I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen, by, uh, fallen from grace. Ye are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did want run well, who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. And remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, that man of sin, the son of perdition, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 under verse 5, okay? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 under verse 5. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Uh, second, uh, second, first John chapter 2 verse 19 they went out from us but they were not all of us but they went out but they were made manifest that they were not all of us okay that's the falling away okay and that man of sin the son of perdition and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition inaccurately referred to as the antichrist who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, the third rebuilt temple, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, okay, Daniel chapter 7, Verse 25, let me get there. Or if, you have, if you've gotten there already, you see that? In Daniel chapter 5, verse, uh, in Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, you see that? Okay, I'm finally there. Okay. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Change times and laws. Because during the time of Jacob's trouble, the law is going to be reinstituted with scriptural uh, animal sacrifices. Okay? The commandment of the Sabbath is going to be brought back into play. Okay? The keeping of the feasts. Okay? Until that man of sin, the son of perdition, goes into the temple, declares himself to be God, okay? And he's going to change times and laws, and he's going to change the Sabbath onto Sunday, like 
Catholicism has been preparing all of you today for what's coming during the time of Jacob's trouble. And we have already looked and proven in scriptures that it is not a commandment to, to have this Christian Sabbath. There's no such thing. It's whatever day you want. Give a day unto the Lord. Absolutely. A day of rest. Absolutely. It's not the Sabbath, though. The Sabbath was for the Jews, not for any of us today. Okay? It's not a requirement. It's whatever day you choose. We're not supposed If you want to worship on Sunday, I'm not going to judge you. You want to worship on Saturday, I'm not going to judge you. And the holy days are the days given to us in Scripture, not man-made holidays. Okay? Okay? And also in Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 on to verse 25. Okay? And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper in practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many, and shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but shall be broken without hand. And see, during that time of uh, Jacob's trouble, okay, there are going to be those Jews who are going to side with that man of sin, the son of perdition, and take the mark of the beast in their right hand or in their forehead. And then there are go those that are going to what? Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Uh, verses 15 on to verse 24. On to verse 22. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation. A title for that man of sin and son of perdition. Spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth let him understand, when the son of perdition stands in the thir third rebuilt temple, declaring himself to be God, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. And see, Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble for the Jews. Hence, the Sabbath is going to be reinstituted during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to come and change times and laws. Say, hey, worship on Sunday. And you watch, you Christians who get left behind. You watch. Christ Mass and Estarte. Especially Christ Mass. I bet you, and you Christians who get left behind, we're going to go through the Great Tribulation. You mark my words. That man of sin, the son of perdition, is either going to be born on Christ Mass, maybe reveal himself on Christ Mass, but I, I guarantee you, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to make a humongous deal of Christ Mass. Why? Because Christ Mass is a Roman Catholic pagan holiday. You watch, you Christians who get left behind. You watch. You watch. You watch. Verse 21, because I said on to verse 22, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, talking about the Jews, those days shall be shortened. See, the problem is Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, just one verse. <laughs> I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. 
And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and they're not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Catholics do not say they are Hebrews or Jewish, but they teach replacement theology. The, 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 the Sunday worship has replaced the Sabbath. Scriptures teach no such thing. Or black Hebrew Israelites, okay, they say they are Jews and are not, and want to bring you under the law. And Revelation 3, verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. And see, right now these heretics, they say, well, see, it's the Jews. No, no. Synagogue of Satan. A building of Satan. A holy place of worship. Synagogue of Satan. It's talking about the, uh, the Christian Catholic church buildings. It's church buildings. Synagogue of Satan. Of Roman Catholicism which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. See, you got people out there who say that they are the apple of God's eye when the Jew is the apple of God's eye. Looking to change times and laws. Okay? And they tell you, we, we, we read it. We read it. Catholics, as well with the Puritans, taught the that it was a commandment to worship on Sunday. It isn't. It isn't. It's whatever day you chose. They chose, now they gave an example about Sunday. Yes, they did. I'm not denying that at all. But it's not a commandment. You don't want to worship on Sunday? Don't. I we don't. Okay? We don't. Whatever day is meet, that's the day that we give unto the Lord. And this thing about replacing the Sabbath for Sunday worship, it's going to reach its fulfillment during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But as we have seen, the Sabbath, man turned the actual Sabbath into an idol as they have turned Sunday worship into an idol. Okay? The Sabbath was given on to the Jews during the, time, during the dispensation of the law. It was a requirement for their salvation. Okay? Under this dispensation, yes, we should get together. Yes, we should. Okay? And Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19, verse 25, specifically, does not apply for us today. Okay? And if a man want to worship on Sunday, Saturday, Monday, we are not to judge, okay? Because the law has been fulfilled, okay? So the keeping of the Sabbath is not a requirement to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. If you're Jewish, like I said, sure, go ahead and keep it. But it's not a requirement. And the ones that are making a big stink about the Christian Sabbath come from Catholicism. And John Calvin, he was a Catholic. He, he turned his back on Catholicism, but he, like his boy Martin Luther, they wanted to reform Catholicism. Like I've always said, Martin Luther wanted it to be the German Catholic Church. Hey buddy, you want it to be the German Catholic Church, right? Let no man judge you in regards of meat, drink, or of a holy day, the new moon, or the Sabbath. All references onto Jewish customs, onto the Jewish holy days, not man-made ones. So, that is going to be it for this video. Hopefully this will help some of you. Okay? You are not required to go to church on every Sunday. Okay? It's not a requirement. It's whatever day you may see fit to do so. Give it on to the Lord. Okay? And beware of those who put stumbling blocks in your way and elevate one day above another. Be careful about that. 
and then judge you as lost for doing so. Be, beware of people like that. Beware of people like that. So, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. I'll uh, be quite a few links in the description box about this. Please keep us in our, uh, your prayers. Thank you to those of you who have helped us and pray for us. Please continue to do so. We need all the help and prayers we can get. Please pray for my wife. She's going through some stuff right now. And we need all your prayers. Please pray for us. Thank you for watching this if you do. We love you. And we will see you in the next video.